On today's show, Barb and I are going to make stuffed pork chops. We have a lot of really good ingredients that are going to go into this for you today. We're also going to have broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots as our vegetables. A lot of really good spices, so let's get started. Hey Barb, what's the question of the day? Do you like mozzarella cheese? If you like mozzarella cheese, give a thumbs up. Let's start out with our mixed vegetables. So this broccoli cauliflower mix, you can microwave them or you can put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven. But it's just as easy just to throw them in a Pyrex bowl and then just put these right in the microwave. We'll do that in a little while. Now, for the stuffing, mozzarella, cheese, oil, carrots, and paprika. So all we have to do is get that over in a mixing bowl, just like this. Here's our paprika. Let's get this all out of the way so we can work. Here's our oil. Today I'm using a garlic mushroom olive oil. So use as much oil as you want or as you need. Then we'll just grab something to toss this with, just a wooden spoon. We'll get this tossed up like this. You want it a little bit oily because you want it to stick to the meat. And I have a couple of really nice looking pork chops I was thinking I was going to show you a minute ago. And by the way, I have washed the pork chops off with just tap water. Some people will use vinegar or something and then water, but I use just plain water. Okay, maybe a little bit more oil. There actually does not need to be a measurement on this. It's not going to change anything. You know, olive oil is really good for you. So use as much of that as you want. There you go. There's a, a simple stuffing. Now we need to think about our marinade. Now for the marinade, when you make this, you have to remember you're going to brush the pork chops, but you want to save some of it to pour on top. So you have to make sure you don't cross contaminate things. So to start out, I have my bowl and I have some orange juice. So I'll put the orange juice in the bowl and then be ready in a minute with the mixing bowl to come back into the measuring cup. I'm using some Italian seasoning. This is my Carabas that I've reverse engineered. And by the way, you don't have to remember these measurements because right down there where it says the subscribe button, if you hit that, you'll see the more button and all the ingredients will be listed there. I'm also using garlic powder. You know, all these recipes have to have garlic in them. So there's some garlic powder all set. And it has ketchup, one of my favorite ingredients. So let's get the ketchup in here, just like that. Wow, yum. Next is honey. Now for honey, I don't put this off in a measuring cup or anything while I'm cooking because honey sticks to everything. And I don't really usually measure my honey. I just use a lot of it because I like it. All right, so we're done with the ketchup. Let's get that out of our way. Ingredient here is uh, can be lemon or lime juice. Pretty simple. Here we go. Here's our ingredients. Now, I have my measuring cup for that to go back in. I have a whisk. I can use a small one here. So I don't splash this all over the place. And I probably could have just left it in the measuring cup. I actually thought about it. But you know, a mixing bowl has round edges on it so that things don't stick to it, ingredients don't stick to it. So just out of habit, I'm used to using a mixing bowl. And we'll just get this kind of mixed up here. You could go crazy if you wanted to use uh, something like uh, a blender and some olive oil. Just 
just like this. Now, that's all mixed. Get this out of our way. And let's try to neatly pour some in here. We'll leave a little bit in the bottom. Now if I need more, I can work backwards because it won't be cross-contaminated. So I saw a little bit of orange juice in the bottom here, so I'll just give this a little bit of a stir and splash it on the counter. I try to make as much mess as I can. I think that's part of the fun. I might have too much here. Just offload a little bit more here. You can always pour it back in. Now, these pork chops, nice, big, thick pork chops. So, let's just brush on them, just like this. Try not to make too much of a mess. Wow, this is gonna be great. Some salt and pepper. I like salt and pepper, so. Okay, now I need to turn these over. So if I grab my little tongs here, I use for working on the island. Grab them like this. By the way, I have the oven preheating to 350. And we don't actually know how long these are going to take to cook because we're not going to cook by time, we're going to cook by temperature. So I have a remote probe that I'm going to put in these, and you know I'm going to want to get them up to 170. So we'll see how long it takes to get them up to 170. So here we go. All on here. More the merrier. That honey to stick on there. Just like that. Yum, yum. Now, remember, you have to pitch this because of the cross contamination. So that's gone. Now, we need to stuff the pork chops after we salt and pepper everything really good. I know it seems like a lot, but if you don't, they'll taste like cardboard. You gotta salt and pepper. There we go. We're ready to get our stuffing mix and our pan that we're gonna put it in. So, this we're going to save to pour on top. Let's grab our pan. I have a deep pan because it could get a lot of juice in it. I have aluminum foil in the bottom of it already. Then for the top, I buy these little packages of pre-cuts. And let's put that right up on top. Not that I need to seal it so much because the juice dripping in the bottom, it'll be fine. But I do want to contain it a little bit. So here is our onions. We're going to put them right here on the bottom, just like this. And that was just one onion that I cut up into chevrons. And here is our stuffing mix. This is how simple this is. Whole bunch of stuffing mix. Now we need to wrap these up. So this is probably the hard part. So I'm just going to take some string and I'm going to put a little loop here in the end of it, a little cinched loop, just like this. So there you go. There's a loop. Now, I 
take my pork chops and I'll put the string through the loop like this and then around the pork chop and then pull it tight to hold the pork chop. Then you can just take your string and wrap it nice and tight. There's no right or wrong way. You just want to wrap it tight is all. And then looks just like that. Then I grab my mix and just pour some on top just like this. sure that I don't put the brush inside that bowl. The brush is dirty. Here is the onions. Let's go ahead and transfer these right on top here. These are heavy. Just like that, sit on top of the onions. Grab some more mix right out of here. Right up on top. It's a pretty simple recipe. There we go. And then it looks like this. Lastly, We'll insert our probe in one of them. I don't think there's any difference between the two of them. And then I have my Taylor thermometer set to 170. So it'll work me when they get to that temperature. I'll put them in the oven. Okay, veggies are out of the microwave. They look good. I just took the pork out of the stove. Be careful with these pans because there can be a lot of liquid in the bottom of them that you don't spill. And we'll just grab a plate. Serve these up. This will be for our veggies. There we go. And then grab some tongs for our stuffed pork chop and just, you know, like I always say, double check, make sure it's 180. 170 at the least, but they always go up towards 180. So these are cooked, they're in good shape. There we go. Wow, it looks good and smells delicious. So, well, if you've enjoyed watching the show like this, I have some more right there. <laughs>